morning, first grade. This morning, we are going to pick back up with our new Witten Wisdom text story called Waiting for the Biblio Burrow. So yesterday, you listened to a read aloud of it, and we're actually going to reread the story today. And as we've mentioned before, that that is something that good readers do all the time. Just like when you watch a movie once and then you watch it again or a third time or even more than that. And each time you notice something different, you learn or, you know, notice something that you didn't notice the first time. And that's exactly why good readers will reread the same book many times so that they can really notice and wonder and really answer the questions that they have and really understand the story. So before we jump into that, let's just quickly look at our different questions, our pizza questions. Our big pizza, whole piece of pizza is how do books change life for people around the world? And you're probably starting to think a little bit about that in connection with the Tomas story and probably see some similarities between the story about Tomas and the story about Anna. So just kind of keep thinking about that. Our one piece of pizza question is, how does the Biblio Burrow change life for Anna? Again, you're probably thinking back to Tomas a little bit and making some connections and seeing how this is similar. And again, today, our main, our, our bite-sized question that we're really trying to answer today is what do I notice and wonder about waiting on the Biblio Burrow? So if you remember last time, you thought about a question that you had, you wrote it down, and then you listened to the story to see if you were able to answer that question. So I just wanted to take a little bit of time today to go back to some questions that came up, and you guys had some really great questions. See if we can then go back and reread and find the answers. So some of the questions um, people asked were, where does Anna live? And I thought that was a great question. Uh, someone, a few people also asked, uh, who is the Biblio Also a great question. Some of you mentioned about like who was with the Biblio Burrow. Um, someone had asked about what were the two Burrow's names that were with the Biblio Burrow. Well, sorry, an, an announcement over the loudspeaker. Um, and then, so I was mentioning that someone asked about who was with the Biblio Burrow and who, uh, what were the Burrow's names, which was another great question. And then someone asked a question about the butterfly. Um, who, who is riding a butterfly? And I think that's a really great question, and we'll we'll come back to that and answer that. So just like last time, we ask ourselves questions and we think about the questions before we start reading so that we really have something to focus on while we're reading a story. And I know to me, it's it's when I look at the questions ahead of time and I'm reading, it's almost like I hear a little bell going off in my head going ding, ding, ding. There was a question about something that you're reading right now, and it just helps me to kind of focus my brain to say, oh, wasn't there a question about that? Let's pay attention to this part, especially good. Um, so let's go ahead and reread and see if we can answer our questions. All right, so I have moved myself here in the question and answer chart, and we have our book, the book next to us. So we will read and keep those questions in mind. So waiting for the Biblio Burrow. On a hill behind a tree, there is a house. In a house, there is a bed, and on the bed, there is a little girl named Anna, fast asleep, dreaming about the world outside and beyond the hill. So I'm kind of thinking I'm going to keep reading, but I bet we're going to hear something about where she lives, and maybe we'll get some more specific information about where she lives. And sometimes the illustrations can help answer. When Anna wakes up to the, the rooster's key, 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 or key, cock-a-doodle-doo, Papa is already at work on the farm and Mammy is busy in the garden. Anna bathes her little brother and feeds the goats and collects the eggs to sell at the market. 
After breakfast, Anna and her mother walk down the hill. Anna closes her eyes against the sun and wishes she was back in the cool of her uh, the cool of the house with her libro, her book. So it looks like she lives on a farm that is in a small town or what's called a village um, that is on this hill. And that's what it seems like. I haven't heard a specific name of a specific city or country yet, um, but it seems like she lives on a farm that is in some type of village. So we'll kind of keep that in mind and we'll keep reading. Anna has read her book, her only book, so many times she knows it by heart. The book was a gift from her teacher for working so hard on her reading and writing. But last fall, her teacher moved far away, and now there is no one to teach Anna and the other children in her village. Okay, so I keep moving around here, Anya, on this page, but I think that we can answer that first question that she lives on farm and I know this is really small so I will make this a little bit bigger uh, for us to be able to see it but I'm going to put it in the center if you remember um, by putting it in the center that means that it's an answer in progress we think that this is is the answer, but we're going to keep it there and then keep reading to see if we do learn any more information about maybe a specific town or, or you know, country that she's in. All right, so back to the story. There's a picture of her with her book and you can see the teacher, what I think is the, who I think is the teacher in there in the background. So at night on her bed on the house on the hill, and that kind of adds to our answer of where she lives. Anna makes up her own cuentos and tells the stories to her little brother to help him fall asleep. She tells some stories about make-believe creatures that live in the forest and the mountains and the sea. She wishes for new stories to read, but her teacher with the books has gone. One morning, Anna wakes up to the sounds of tech tech click clop and a loud ee-ah, ee-ah. When Anna looks down the hill below her house, she sees a man with a sign that reads Biblio Burrow. With the man, there are two burrows. What are they carrying? Okay, so that my, my brain uh, little alarm bell is going off and saying, I know there's a question about Biblio Burrow and there were some other questions about the burrows and the man. So I'm gonna be really paying attention to this part to really try to answer the, this, that next question on our question chart. Libros, books. Anna runs down the hill to the man with the sign and the burrows and the books. Other children run to him too, skipping down hills and stomping through the fields. Who are you? Who are they? The children ask. The man says, I am a librarian a biblioticario, and these are my burrows, Alpha and Beto. Welcome to the biblio burrow, my biblioteca. But senor, Anna says, I thought libraries were only in big cities and buildings. Not this one, says the librarian. This is a moving library. Then he spreads out his books and invites the children to join him under a tree. All right, so I think we have some information on that second question. Let's take a look. Okay, so it says, who is the Biblio Burrow? So I, the Biblio Burrow is the, is the moving library, right? And it is a moving library that is being moved by the burrows, right? Biblio Burrow is a moving library with burrows. And then the person that had asked about who was the man with the burrows, he would be the librarian. That's the man that is the librarian. So just like a regular library that would be in you know, a regular building, he is the librarian of the Biblio Borough, which is the moving library uh, that is moved by the burrows. So I, I think that this is pretty, like a pretty good completed answer but we're going to leave it here in the center column just to be sure 
and we'll we'll keep reading and see if we need to change anything. All right. So there's the Biblioboro. Once upon a time, the librarian begins sharing the story of an elephant who swings from a spider's web. He reads from books with beautiful pictures, then helps the little ones learn their ab the, their ABCs is the abecedario. I probably didn't say that right. I'm, I'm working on it. He sings A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Finally, he says, now it's your turn. Pick out books, and in a few weeks, I will be back to collect them and bring you new ones. Me too, asked Anna. Especially you, says the librarian with a smile. And speaking of words that, you know, that I'm not sure how to say because I don't speak Spanish and they're new for me, you know, if we know what they mean, we can just try our best to pronounce them as best that we can. And it's always something that we could ask someone or go and look up how to pr correctly say them. Um, I get, you know, stuck on it sometimes myself, which, you know, is, is perfectly normal. So it's okay. But I know that that means the alphabet and I use the clues from the story to help me figure out, even if I'm not exactly sure that I'm saying it correctly, we can still learn the meaning of a word, even if we're not saying it perfectly correct. All right, so there's a picture. So many cuentos. While Alpha and Beto chomp the sweet grass under the tree, Anna picks up book after book and finds pink dolphins and blue butterflies, castles and fairies, talking lions and magic carpets. Hmm, so I, I hear butterflies again. I'm gonna, my, my alarm bell's kind of going ding, ding, ding. Let's see what's going on. All right, all right. Someone should write a story about your burrows, Anna tells the librarian, rubbing Alpha's nose and feeding more grass to Beto. Why don't you, he asked. Then he packs up the books and is off. Enjoy, he calls to the children. I will be back. And if you notice, this was your fluency passage. That part I just read was, was what is, in, is your fluency passage for this week. Anna runs up the hill to her house, hugging the books to her chest. She can't wait to share her books with her brother. And that night she reads until she can't keep her eyes open any longer. There's the Biblioboro leaving and all the kids waving. Okay, and these are the days of the week passing. So it's showing you that time is passing. Each morning, Anna does her chores and reads and looks out her window. She listens for the sounds of Alpha and Beto, but weeks pass and the librarian doesn't return. Two more days. When will he come back, she asked her mother, who smiles and says, go read, Anna. When will he come back, she asked her mother, who smiles and says, go draw, Anna. When will he come back, she asked her mother, who smiles and says, go write, Anna. When will he come back? She asked her mother, who finally says, go to bed, Anna. Says, Once upon a time. So here's that butterfly. And someone had the question about the butterfly and just kind of who was on it, what was going on, what was happening with the butterfly. Who do you think is on the butterfly? And what do you think this is about? And does this remind you of anything that happened in Tomas? I'll let you think about that for a minute. What do you think? Let's keep reading and we'll think about that. One night on a dream, she is flying over her country on a butterfly's back. In her dream, she crosses mountains and oceans and rivers and jungles, bringing stories everywhere she goes. Stories fly from her mouth and fingers like magic falling into the hands of children waiting below. When Anna wakes up, she misses Alpha and Be Beto and the Biblio Burroughs books. She remembers that the librarian told her that she could write a book. And so, with paper and string and colored pencils, she does. Okay, so I think to answer the question of who is riding the butterfly, I think we can answer that Anna rides the butterfly her dream, 
But this also reminds me very much of when Tomas was holding on to the dinosaur's neck, right? Was he really holding on to the dinosaur's neck? The whole point of that part was he was using his imagination, that the books were allowing him to, you know, open up his imagination. Don't you think the same thing is happening with Anna? I think so too. All right, we'll keep reading. Finally, just when Anna thinks she'll never see the Biblio Burrow again, she wakes up to the ee-ah, ee-ah, and children yelling. She runs down the hill with her library, such a surprise of her very own. I wrote this cuento for you, she says. Qui bien, the librarian says, and then he reads her story to the children under the tree. You can see there's her book. There's the Biblio Burrow. When it's time to go, Anna's book is packed carefully on the burrow's back, ready to be carried away over the hills and through the fields to another child who is Asleep on a bed in a house on a hill behind a tree, dreaming of Alpha and Beto and all the new stories the Biblio Burrow will bring. And there we have it. All right, so I feel pretty good with our question that I think, you know, Anna lives on a hill, on a farm, in a village. We didn't learn any more additional names of countries or states or anything as we read. And I think that the Biblio Burrow, uh, again, we, we were correct with our answer in progress. A moving library, um, and Alpha, and okay, Alpha, and Beto are the burrows. That was their name. And then the man with them is the librarian. And then Anna does ride the butterfly in her dream, but also uses her imagination. And reading. Okay, so I'm sure you are seeing some things that are very much alike, um, and some that are different with our Tomas and the Library Lady story. So I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for sending in some really great questions. I can tell you're really thinking about this. And we will keep working on this story and uh, talk about the story stones, the story elements in one of our next lessons. So I'll see everybody soon. Thanks for your hard work.